Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Siegel number SE15307. This is a uh, flat strike, what they call a flat strike. Siegel has two strikes primarily for their manual surface mounted or rim mounted vertical deadbolts. They have a flat strike and then they have a angle strike. This is the flat strike. You can use your imagination and see why we would call it a flat strike. Um, the flat strike can be used in, uh, it's, it's really meant to be used in an outswinging application. Or I should say, if you have an outswinging application, it will be the, it will certainly be the strike that you'll need to use. And that's what this looks like. Okay, a flat strike. This is going to have an overall height of about four and an eighth. Overall width of about an inch and a sixteenth. Thickness of the base material is about an eighth of an inch, maybe just heavy. Overall projection about an inch and a sixteenth. To the center of those holes, you can to, to the center of the hole, you can see it's about eleven sixteenths. So normally what you're gonna have is a Siegel, a Siegel lock installed on an in-swinging application, residential applications. Those doors are going to be primarily in-swing. So you're always going to see those, and you'll see those with an angle strike. Well, once in a while, I installed one for a customer on his exterior steel hollow metal door and frame swinging out, and there's no opportunity to use the angle strike because there's nowhere to install the angle strike in an outswing application. So you're relegated to attaching the flat strike to what's called the soffit. Um, and then installing your lock body accordingly. Let's take a look at what the, how that all lays out. Okay, now as we look at the product description of our item, um, we see the flat strike. Installation instructions are here along with the product catalog, but what I would really like to do is simply illustrate how this flat strike works. So if you have a frame um, it can be a, let's just say that this is a residential frame. Let's say it's, that's horrible. Let's say that it is single rabbit. Doesn't have to be, but it can be, okay? So your door, I'm going to swing that way, okay? Now generally that angle strike is going to be installed here. Okay, it's going to fill in all this area. The advantage of the angle strike is that you're going to run screws this way and this way. Okay, giving you a really great opportunity to uh, get your lock installed. There's your lock body. It's going to lock into that angle strike. Um, you could certainly also attach surface mount, or I suppose you could mortise it, but I always see them surface mounted. The flat, the, um, the flat strike. You could make that work as well. Now, however, in the instance where you have a a door that swings out, you have nowhere to attach the angle strike literally nowhere. Your lock needs to be in this area. Okay, So we'll take that flat strike, attach it to the soffit. That's what that's called. That's the stop or the face of the stop. Well this, if you're going to screw it here, that's called the soffit. And then of course your lock body is going to go here. And that's how I installed it on that client's exterior door, his exterior hollow metal door, with a flat strike, because there's nowhere to put an angle strike. Okay. Now to prove this point a little bit further, there is this link to the manufacturer's page here that you will be able to pull up this catalog from 1929. And I don't know the year that this lock was patented. Uh, I know that the gentleman was a New York police officer or detective, I believe a detective, who patented the Siegel lock. Now rim locks were by no means um, not invented. I could show you catalogs from the from the 19th century showing rim mounted um, 
deadbolts, basically, is what they were. However, and when I say rim-mounted, what I mean is if you look at a door in elevation, the rim is around the perimeter of the lock. So locks that are mounted around the, around the rim of the lock or the rim of the door is called a rim lock. Okay? Um, but what made the Siegel lock unique is that these bolts l lock into the strike. So to a lot of people, that's a real positive reason to use Siegel locks. And as we scroll through the catalog, you're going to see the angle strike and the flat strike. The angle strike is adapted to the majority of doors, including single door openings inwardly or double sliding door and double doors opening outwardly, uh, pardon me, inwardly or outwardly. So you could make that strike work on your inactive door, either in a push side mount or a pull side mount, they're obviously saying. Okay, going this way, going this way, doesn't matter. Throw that strike here. Throw that strike here. It's going to work. It's going to work just the same no matter how you do it. The flat strike is adapted to the single door opening outwardly, and the single sliding door. Okay. So if you're going to use the flat strike on an in-swing application, you're going to want to make sure that you have the correct alignment to make sure that when you attach the body. And that the hole that's here, when you bring the lock body, depending on where the door is actually in relationship to, this will be your door here, the, the distance from the face of the door to the face of the frame, that's called the inset. You're going to want to make sure before you use the flat strike that you're going to be able to align the lock body and where you install it so that you can correctly capture the bolts going into the hole. You have to make sure of that before you assume that it's going to work. Because even according to the catalog that's almost 100 years old, a flat strike is for that outswinging door, okay? which is where I used it for that customer's hollow metal door. It, it, and like I said earlier, it's, that, it's the unit by default because you have no way to use an angle strike. You must use the flat strike. Uh, they did indeed this was known as the 667. If someone wanted a 666, uh, pardon me, a 667 Siegel, that's a single cylinder Siegel lock. Okay, and as you go through here, if you wanted to really just, you know, get a much more appreciative look at the Siegel line, the 678. I've never, I've never seen a triple bolt version of that. Um, Very, very, very common in large cities. New York is going to see these everywhere. Chicago, very common as well. Um, I can't speak to any other cities, but New York being where the inventor hailed from, you're going to have its deepest penetration there. So a real great catalog to go through. Okay, A number of different locks with different options um, that were available, at, obviously, at the time. Um, and this would be a rim night latch is what they would call this, a slam style lock. Now speaking of a slam style lock, Siegel does make one. And um, let's get to the product catalog that's here. And you'll be able to find this style lock. So what happens is because of the feature of the strike, when you push and slam that door closed, it's going to automatically engage the strike. Whereas you know that when you have the single cylinder version, every time you open the door and close the door, if you want that locked, you have to manually lock it yourself. Okay. An interesting fun fact, I've taken the double cylinder and they only offer this in a Siegel keyway. Um, at one point they had put in the catalog a Schlag C keyway, but either never manufactured it or it was discontinued by the time I needed it. Um, so I was able to successfully remove the entire cylinder mechanism um, and re and install onto it with making some heavy modifications to the cylinder itself, not heavy, just reasonable modification, um, a Schlage C, uh, because the client had on his front door, he had just put in a beautiful Baldwin entrance lock, uh, maybe a Versailles or an Empire, something very beautiful. Well, that, that takes a Schlage C, even though Baldwin can do that 
in a Schlage E and an F, I believe. But he wanted his beautiful Baldwin cylinder. It says Baldwin on it and very nice. Well, on the back door, he had this Siegel lock. And he was indeed in the northwest side of Chicago, where Siegel locks are going to be incredibly common. And I told the client, well, here are some options. Um, obviously, we can sell you a mortise cylinder to install in your Baldwin lock that won't say Baldwin on it, but will take the Siegel keyway, which is what obviously his double cylinder Siegel lock on the back door works. It won't even be in the matching finish, however, because he naturally had antique nickel, so we're not going to easily find that either. Um, and after investigating the, th the, the possibility of remanufacturing the interior lock to take a Schleg C, well, that's what he opted to do, and that's what we were able to do for him. Uh, he mailed me his brand new Baldwin uh, lock key. I, cr I keyed this ma uh, mortise cylinder and the new rim cylinder for the outside to his existing key and sent it all back to him. That was probably in 2017 or 2018 and has been working happily since. So this catalog is neat. And that link to that archival catalog is on the manufacturer's page as well. So let's wrap up this video. Now, why it is this client is ordering a flat strike only, who's to say? He might have or she might have. Uh, it's, it's a he going to a town in Florida of all places. Um, you don't see Siegel locks in Florida very often. He may have relocated uh, a lock from up north. Um, didn't have a strike, ordering the strike only. This will include screws that will take you through that area. You're going to absolutely want to pre-drill your holes. Um, the last thing you want to do is split the frame when you're installing this. That is going to absolutely defeat the entire purpose of installing a Siegel lock. These screws are probably about an inch and a quarter at the most in length. You can't see it through the packaging. One inch. Uh, be mindful of where those screws are going to hit. Um, you want to be sure that you've got reinforcing behind it, like a wood stud. And if it was me, because it's chrome, you know, I might be myself just looking for some number 10, I expect is what these are, as long as possible. Obviously, zinc screws, I wouldn't worry too much about it not being the exact match. You know, screw heads aren't going to be an exact match anyway. So be mindful that you might want to reinforce your installation by using longer screws. And while you're at the hardware store getting longer screws, take your strike and make sure you get a nice fit. I don't know that that's a number 10. It might be a 9. Okay, so be mindful of that. And while you're there, get a long drill bit, a, uh, a aircraft extension, like a six inch length. So you've got lots of room to breathe. Put that drill bit in and out, pre-drill that really nice. Um, the size of the drill bit, um, depending on what the material is that you're drilling through, uh, you will take maybe 80 or 75% of the root diameter if you have a softwood uh, species like a pine. Um, if you were to take the root diameter of the screw, uh, or if you have a hardwood, you probably would want to be at about 85% of the root diameter of the screw, not including the threads. Um, and if you are putting that in there and you're getting way too much pushback, pull that screw out, get the next largest size drill bit that you can, and get a proper fitting size. I used to drill holes to the root diameter. Turns out that's a little too large. So depending on the species of wood, maybe 85% for a hardwood and maybe you know 80% for a softwood uh, lumber. Okay, And then that link to the manufacturer's page will allow you, again, to see the current catalog, that old catalog. Other Siegel locks that we sell as well. And as I had said earlier, if you wanted to put a, uh, a unusual keyway on the inside of your double cylinder, the outside uh, if you want to put, if it's a single cylinder and you want it on the outside only, that's no problem. That's just a rim cylinder. We can certainly sell you that. But if you wanted to do a Primus, a Schlage Primus keyway, we could, we, we'd be able to accommodate that. I've built that custom lock in the past. Or whatever sort of unusual key that you want. If you have... I happen to have a Corbin Russwin H4. Nothing restricted uh, or protected about it. It's just an unusual, you know, keyway in terms of you not you don't bump into it. So if you had a cylinder, a key that's a key system that you wanted to preserve, and you really want a Siegel lock, let us know. We should be able to help you with that. And at some point in the future, we might look into powder coating them as well, black, 
white or red, who cares? It's powder coat, it's paint. Um, and we have successfully powder coated those locks in the past. Um, so that's a discussion that we can have if that uh, is something that you're interested in. If you have any questions on the Siegel, this is their part number SE15307 flat strike and a brushed chrome type finish. Or any other Siegel product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.